this is a mid-war design. This is two P47 engines, 4,000 horsepower total. This is a laminar flow wing like a P51. It's built for speed. That was its big objective. It was a follow-on to an early war design called an A20 Havoc. We built a lot of those and shipped them over the ocean. And this has been a very hardy airframe because it lasted through World War II, the Korean War, and also up into Vietnam. This is a unique bird in that it was in the military in Central America up until the mid-1990s. And it came up here. There is a placard down on the side down here that talks about a museum organization that put a whole lot of hours into restoration. But the actual cockpit here, all of this stuff, is just pretty original. This is a unique opportunity, really, to go back and sit here in this cockpit with this original panel right by the book. This is what the guy in World War II would have sat here and looked at. Years ago, I helped operate an A-26 with the CAF called Lady Liberty out of Oklahoma City. And we used to take it to Oshkosh. That's been 10 years ago now. One of the years we were there, there was this 11-year-old kid that came up. And he was very interested in the airplane. His dad bought him a tour, and we got him up in the cockpit. But he's smarter than your average 11-year-old kid. He starts quoting performance figures correct performance figures and he really was enthused about the airplane well I got the pilot of the airplane to talk to him and they really hit it off and so years later we had an opportunity to give him a ride in the airplane and so that was his first A26 ride in that airplane well the years have moved on and he's grown up became an A&P mechanic he's a co-pilot for an airline his father has an airline background and he just kept loving A26s and this one became available and he and the dad launched into it. So I am told by his family that we are guilty of infecting him with this, so that may be the deal. There's a certain amount of pride in helping operate this thing because we can give P51s a rough time, you know. <clears throat> you just add a little more manifold pressure and they'll call you and say, can you back that off a little bit if you're forced to fly with them? Well, this is the great-grandfather of the A-10 Warthog. This version right here, as it's set up now with the guns under the wings, when we get those things on, we're going to have 14 forward-mounted 50 caliber machine guns that can be set off at the same time. A World War II pilot that I talked to years ago said it would slow you down 15 miles an hour when you touched everything off here, just sheer recoil. And I have a chance to sit here almost on a daily basis to play in this airplane and show it off to people. Come out and visit this type of history. Support it. It's really hard for kids that don't have any knowledge of history to come out and, you know, get inspired by this type of stuff, to come out and do it. A lot of us are getting more and more gray hair doing this and, you know, uh, we have a young person with this crew right now that's in mid-twenties and terribly enthusiastic, wonderfully so, and wants to come do all the stuff and help and anything that she can do. The hobby can use more people like that, younger folks. And, uh, it, there is a wonderful sense of satisfaction in it to me just to get to do it. A wonderful sense of privilege, I guess. And not everybody gets to ride around, go to air shows in a World War II bomber at speed and, and just enjoy that. You're a good pilot, so of course you'd never drink and fly. But when you fly above 8,000 feet, you're at serious risk for something worse, hypoxia. Low oxygen kills your flying skills. It's toxic to fly hypoxic. At Aerox, we make oxygen so easy and affordable. Just flip the switch and breathe easy. In any airplane you fly, our made in USA oxygen systems and masks will keep you safe and sharp. Take off to touchdown. Aerox, number one in oxygen since 1981.